pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Behold, your King comes to you, O Zion, meek and lowly, sitting upon an ass. Right on, in the cause of truth and for the sake of justice. Your throne is a throne of God. It endures forever. And the scepter of your kingdom is the righteous scepter. You have loved righteousness and hated evil. Therefore God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness above your fathers. Together, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also be with you.
Grant that we may follow the example of this patience and humility, and also to be partakers of the resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, your Son and Lord, Lord with the light of our age, you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Old Testament reading for today is taken from Isaiah 54-9. Isaiah 54-9. The Lord God has given me a, the tongue of those who are taught that I may not know how to sustain with a word. Him who is weary, morning by morning he awakens. He awakens my ear to hear as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I turned not backward. I gave my back to those who strike, and my cheeks to those who pull out the beard. I hid not my face from disgrace and spitting. But the Lord God helps me, Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like a flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who is my adversary? Let him come near to me. Behold, the Lord God helps me. Who will declare me guilty? Behold, of all of them will wear out like a garment. The moth will eat them up. This is the word of the Lord. The New Testament reading this morning is taken from Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 to 11. Philippians chapter 2 verses 5 to 11 Your attitude should be the same of that of Christ Jesus Who being in very nature God Did not consider equality with God Something to be grasped But made himself nothing Taking the very nature of a servant Being made in human likeness and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. This is the word of the Lord.
Today is Palm Sunday, the continuation of our Gospel reading, the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Matthew, chapter 21, verses 1 to 11. Glory to Christ our Saviour. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethpage on the Mouth of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there, with her caught by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, say that the Lord needs them, and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophets. Say to daughter Zion, See, your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey, and on a cot, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the cot and placed their clocks on them for Jesus to sit on. A very large crowd spread their clocks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? The crowds answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ our Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Father, may the words of our mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be accepted in the sight of God, our Rock and Redeemer, in the midst of what's around us. In Jesus' name. in Luke chapter 19, verses 35 to 38. And they threw their own clothes on the coat, and they set Jesus on him. And as he went, many spread their clothes on the road. Then, as he was now drawing near the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. On Sundays in Lent in our parish, we have been reflecting on the major theme of the heart of Christ. And today, being Palm Sunday, we arrived at the final sub-theme of a heart that challenges through the Palm Sunday narratives or the stories. One of the living saints of our day is Archbishop Desmond Tutu. He once said, those who say that politics and religion should not mix do not read the same Bible as I do. Speaking of appetite, Tutu even said that black people were often disturbed or perplexed that many who were those who treated them so badly were not heathen or non-Christians but who claimed to be fellow Christians who read the same Bible as they do. Tutu went on to boldly say that those who were those treating anybody as if they were less is like spitting in the very face of God. Now the Bible turned out to be the most subversive book imaginable in a situation of injustice and oppression. It was for Tutu and for so many countless saints of today. For example, during the Second World War, many German Christians, together with others, fought in different ways against Nazism. One of Hitler's most trusted intelligence officer was Colonel Alexis Baron 
Wong Ruen. His Christian conscience was outraged by the Nazi brutality. He falsified a battle order on the Western Front on the eve of D-Day. He went to his execution, of course he was caught. He went to his execution declaring, I shall be going home to the Lord in complete calm and in the certainty of salvation. Another one, Colonel Claus von Stauffenberg, translated his faith into direct action against Hitler. Stauffenberg was the author of the plot to assassinate Hitler in July 1944. A third German Christian, Helmut von Molke, was an officer in German military intelligence. He spread the word about the appalling atrocities carried out by the Nazis. He loudly and publicly insisted that Germany abide by the Geneva Convention. Malka was arrested by the Gestapo and after he in prison, he was hanged. In South Africa, under apartheid, we had on the one side the might of the South African government and on the other, Archbishop Tutu, quoting from the Bible, that subversive book, as it were. Now that is what Palm Sunday is shouting to us. Palm Sunday is but a mix of religion and politics. It cannot be read in any other way. Two thousand years ago, Jesus rode into Jerusalem on a coat that had never been ridden. The disciples brought the coat to Jesus and threw their cloaks on him. Jesus sat on the coat. Many people spread their clothes on the road, while others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Those who went ahead and those who followed shouted, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Jesus rides into Jerusalem on a coat and he makes his way to the temple. He is now challenging not only the Roman authorities by riding on a donkey, but also challenging the Jewish religious authorities by cleansing the temple. At the time of Passover, Jesus journeys to Jerusalem in order to visit the temple. Once there, he drives out those who bought and sold in the temple, overturning tables and scattering the seats of those who sold doves. Jesus said, Is it not written, My house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations, but you have made it a den of thieves. Now there are two key pieces of information which we need in order to understand what is happening in this dramatic, prophetic gesture by Jesus. First, concerns the temple itself. For a thousand years before the birth of Jesus, the temple was the sacred center of the Jewish world. It was considered to be the navel of the earth connecting this world to its source in God. And here in the temple, and only here, was God's dwelling place. The Jews understood that God was everywhere. Heaven and the highest heaven could not contain God. And God's glory filled the earth. But God was especially present in the temple. To stand in the temple Purified and forgiven was to stand in the very presence of God. It was a center of devotion and a destination of pilgrimage. Though the temple was destroyed in the 6th century BC, it was rebuilt when the exiles returned from Babylon. During the first 20 years of Jesus' life, Herod, in Herod, remodeled the temple into a spacious and elegant building with new courts and colonnades. 
There were some dishes used of marble and gold. But what is most important is to remember that is that to be in the temple was to be in God's presence itself. Now in the decades before Jesus' birth, Rome ruled the region by using aristocratic families. Rome used the richest landowners to manage economic resources and the poor people or the peasants. The aristocratic families collected and paid taxes to Rome and through economic and political oppression they kept the people from causing trouble. That system broke down and Rome turned to the temple. Imagine that. Rome, a pagan empire, turned to the temple, to the high priest, the priestly families, and the connection to legal experts, record keepers, and administrators to keep the poor people in order to behave themselves. To the already existing massive economic and political oppression, the high priest brought religious oppression. In short, the high priest told the people that God had ordained life to be this way. So the first important piece of information which we need in order to understand Palm Sunday is the procession of Jesus into Jerusalem is the fact that the temple, while being God's dwelling place on earth, his mercy seat as it were, was also the instrument of political, economic and religious oppression of the poor by the rich. That's what the temple has stood for now. You are a landowner. If you control the means of production, the food supply, the rights of your workers, if you could call in their credit at any time, you had their lives in your hands. And the high priest said, to the poor people, God had ordained life for you to be poor. Despite the fact the Jewish law forbids the temple priests to own land. Yet we find they own and they became wealthy landowners. As such, Jesus cleansing the temple was a challenge to the economy, political, and religious oppression by the rich and the powerful Jewish leaders. The second piece of information which you need to understand the significance of the dramatic prophetic gesture of Jesus riding on the coat is that there was not only one, there were not only one, but two processions entering Jerusalem on that day. This dramatic prophetic gesture by Jesus was carefully planned by Jesus himself. It did not happen by chance. The gospel records tell us that Jesus had pre-arranged to have a coat ready and sent his disciples to collect it. And Jesus entered the city from the east, from Galilee. He was accompanied by his disciples and many followers, by country people, ordinary country folks, by peasants. On the opposite side of the city, from the west, Pontius Pilate, the Roman governor, entered Jerusalem at the head of a column of imperial cavalry and soldiers. One Bible commentator wrote, and I quote this, Imagine the imperial, imp imperial procession arrival in the city, a visual panoply of imperial power, cavalry on horses, foot soldiers, leather armor, helmets, weapons, banners, golden eagles mounted on poles, sun glinting on metal and wood. Then there were the sounds, the marching of feet, the creaking of the leather, the clinking of bridles, and the beating of drums. Pontius Pilate represented the emperor of Rome. 
and he had come to Jerusalem at the time of Passover to reinforce the garrison there because many Jews have gathered from all over and that's a hotbed for rebellion. So the day on which the Roman governor processed from the west into Jerusalem displaying the might, power and theology of Rome, Jesus rode into Jerusalem from the east on a coat. Jesus entered the city as the son of David, as Yahweh's Messiah. Here the justice of God's kingdom was on display. Jesus challenges the might of the Romans by riding on a donkey. This is religion and politics put together. The Palm Sunday procession is not for the amusement of children or adults. It is a direct political action rising from a deeply held religious view that every human being is made in the image of God and that neither the high priest nor conscious pilot has the right to dehumanize or oppress a single child of God. That's the heart of God, the very heart of Jesus that challenges Roman and Jewish authorities. In conclusion, one person who took up the challenge of Christ, of his triumphal entry against Rome, and cleansing the temple was a lady by the name of Isabel Bonfi. Now many do not know this name, even I didn't know until I did the research. Many do not know this name, but she was a very important woman in American history. She was born a slave, but she was able to escape with her daughter. Then she went to court to regain possession of her son from a white slave owner. In doing so, she became the first African-American woman to win a case against a white slave owner. She would go on in American history to become one of America's prime mover in abolishing the slave trade and an early leader of women's rights. Many do not know her by the name because she changed her name to Sojourner Truth. Interestingly, her life was dramatically marked by a pursuit of truth that will also champion justice. Why? Because truth was first pursuing and she answered the challenge to pursue it. In the realm of human rights, Sojourner Truth believed and practiced the words of Christ to Pontius Pilate. You shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Jesus challenged Pilate to see and embrace truth and Pilate's failure to respond reminds us that the same challenge awaits us. Will we fail like Pilate did or do we challenge the might of powers in challenging injustice, economy, political and religious oppression? Palm Sunday shouts to us to be like Jesus, a heart which dares to challenge the injustices of Pilate, Rome and the Jewish religious authorities and all the atrocities and violence. Our God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, we all honor and glory to an end power, now and forever. Amen. One Holy God. We believe in one God, the Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten of me, one and the Father. To him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, 
was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified and was crucified, he suffered and died and was resurrected. On the third day he rose again and he fulfilled the scriptures. He ascended into the heaven and he sat at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. The Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one who leads the living and apostolic church. We acknowledge our baptism for the forgiveness of sins, will for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let's pray. We stand with Christ in his suffering for forgiveness for the many times we have denied Jesus. Let us pray to the Lord. For grace to seek out those habits of sin, which mean spiritual death, and by prayer and self-discipline to overcome them. Let us pray to the Lord. For Christian people, that through the suffering of this unity, there may grow a rich union in Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who make laws, interpret them, and administer them, that our common life may be ordered in justice and mercy. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who still make Jerusalem a battleground, let us pray to the Lord. For those who have the courage and honesty to work openly for justice and peace, let us pray to the Lord. For those in the darkness and agony of isolation, that they may find support and encouragement, let us pray to the Lord. For those who weigh down with hardship, failure or sorrow, Feel that God is far from them. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who are tempted to give up the way of the cross, let us pray to the Lord. That we, with those who have died in faith, may find mercy in the day of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Page 26. Together, have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And to uphold us by your Spirit, that we live and serve you in the newness of life. To the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hear the word of God to all who truly turn to him. In John chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son to the world, that all who believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. 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 We stand for the peace. Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also be with you. Let us share the peace with one another. Peace be with you.
page 29. Pray, brothers and sisters, if this our sacrifice may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. Together, yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendor, and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own will we give you. Amen. The Lord is here. And all spirits. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right. It is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise, Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord. And now we give you thanks because for our sins Jesus is lifted high upon the cross that he might draw the whole world to himself and by his suffering and death became the source of eternal salvation for all who put their trust in him. Therefore with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name forever praising you and saying, Holy, 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 Holy is the Lord of hosts. Holy, 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 Holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole Holy, earth is full of His glory. Holy is the Lord. Accept our praise and serve Father, through your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And this follows example and obey His command. Granted by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts, of bread and wine may be towards the body and the blood of Christ. In the same night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and he gave you thanks. Broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way after supper, Jesus took the cup and he gave you thanks. And he gave it to them all, saying, Drink this, all of you. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember Christ offering himself, made once for all upon the cross, and proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. As we look for his coming in glory, we celebrate with this bread and this cup his one perfect sacrifice. Except to him, our great high priest, this, this is our sacrifice of thanks and praise, and as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of the divine majesty, renew us by the Spirit. Inspire us with your love and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ, Father Lord. Through him and with him and in him, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we all stand before you on earth and heaven. We worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless, bless the Lord, Lord my soul, and all that is within me. Bless, bless his holy name. He has done great things. He has done great things. He has done great things. Bless his holy name. Amen. Right. As the Savior taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is. Give us today our daily bread. 
Forgive us our sins, as you forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are in us, now and forever. Amen. Dearly beloved, broken is the Lamb of God, broken but not divided. Have eaten, he had never consumed, sanctifying all part of it. Amen. Amen. Jesus, the Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bear of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, reading of the world, give us your peace. So join in with faith and take this sacrament to your confidence and strength. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. Amen. We do not presume to come to Jesus in the words of the Lord, trusting in our own righteousness. But in the many who have been waiting for us, we may not worry so much as we have now accomplished under your table. But by your mercy, Lord, in the interest of grace and mercy, grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to keep the flesh of the dear Son, Jesus Christ, and every grace of God, that we may never more be in Him and be in us. Amen. Amen. We will now receive the sacrament of the body and blood of Christ on behalf of the entire congregation of Christ Church Malacca and also St. David's Church in Sumerudan. We pray that we can receive this, those of us who are told, can receive this by faith in our hearts and in our minds, though we will not be consuming the physical elements of the bread and wine. The post communion sentence from St. Matthew chapter 26 verse 42. Jesus said, Father, if this cup may not pass from me, but I must drink it, your will be done. The Prayer of Thanksgiving on page 34. The second prayer. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. To him we offer your souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out the power of the Spirit to live in the world to your praise and glory. Amen. 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 Christ crucified, draw you to Himself, to find in Him a sure ground for faith, a firm support for hope, and the assurance of sins forgiven. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name, in the name of, of Christ. Christ.